Good evening. I'm Father Charlie Mayer, assisting priest of the Sister Episcopal Parishes in Ossining. Welcome to our service of Compline for this Thursday evening. The service begins on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And now Psalm 134 on page 131. Behold, now bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now we read from a lesson appointed for this day in the Daily Office Lectionary. This is from the Book of Revelation, chapter 9, beginning with the first verse. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given authority like the authority of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to damage the grass of the earth or any green growth or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torture them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torture was like the torture of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days people will seek death, but will not find it. 
They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses equipped for battle. On their heads were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like women's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. They had scales like iron breastplates, and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots, with horses rushing into battle. They have tails like scorpions with stingers, and in their tails is their power to harm people for five months. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, he is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed. There are still two woes to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I've commented in other Compline reflections that we have the opportunity when we use the daily office lectionary to hear scripture and reflect on scripture that we don't have the opportunity to engage in the Sunday morning lectionary and the three-year cycle of Sunday morning. This is certainly such a passage. I'm quite sure I've never preached on this passage. It's from the book of Revelation, which is such a curious, odd, difficult to untangle text. The thing to remember about it, well, really, there are two main things to remember about it. The first is that it's highly symbolic. It is in no way meant to be taken literally. And the second is that it is addressing not the future, but the present as it existed at the time it was written. It was a time of great strife for the Jewish community. And it is really that strife and the promise of being delivered from that strife that is being addressed in the book of Revelation. So we have these fantastic descriptions of locusts that look like horses equipped for battle, of scorpions who sting and torture people for five months. All of it, again, is highly symbolic and addressing the difficulties of the present. But then, and this, these words occur throughout the book of Revelation, the woe has passed. The first woe has passed. So, woven in to these astonishing texts in the book of Revelation is always, and in fact, primarily, the sense that these woes are temporary. They will pass. The message of the book of Revelation is really a message of hope and promise. And that is what we may take from it tonight in the midst of this continuing woe of the pandemic. This woe will pass. We are suffering, but deliverance is coming. This is the promise of this strange book of the Bible. May we take it in and believe it this night. Amen.
we continue in the middle of page 131, 132, excuse me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it all snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace, and let your blessing be upon us always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, your unfailing providence sustains the world we live in and the life we live. Watch over those both night and day who work while others sleep, and grant that we may never forget that our common life depends upon each other's toil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue now in silent prayer. Let us pray. And we pray aloud for Mark, Antonia, Kathleen, Alicia, Karen, Betty, Faith, Teresa, Henry, Chuck, Isaiah, Christine, Roger, Samantha, Ruth, John Eric, Dan, Catherine, Justin, the Diaz family, Ray, Zoe, Anya, Mrs. Zackheim, Katrina, and Tina. For our essential workers, Holly, Ray, Alfreda, Jan, Alexis, Todd, Peter, Dina, Steve, and Graham. And for those who have died, especially Lisa, Gary, Douglas, William, and Sarah. Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord. Keep us mindful that this woe will pass, that we may live in hope and secure in your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised, for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see. A light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.